Hey, with us now, senior pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York City, New York Times bestselling author, Tim Keller. He is the co-author of the new book, Every Good Endeavor, connecting your work to God's work. Redeemer is absolutely extraordinary. You were talking about it off the air. You guys started, I don't know, you started in a ditch somewhere. Now <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you have seven <laughs> services, uh, or, or, or you did, and now you've got this huge place on the Upper West Side. It is remarkable how much Redeemer has grown. How many members? Oh, we have about 6,000 people coming now. After, but it took a while, 24 years. Yeah, yeah. But boy, it's it's took just, Jesus 33. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Actually, three. <laughs> well, that's depends true. on how you look that's at true. it. That's oh true. boy, we got a couple of theologians. Uh, before, <laughs> we should yeah, just so duck. Stand aside. <laughs> we should we should just duck. Well, you know, one of the things that's so fascinating about Redeemer, you go outside of New York and other places, and I grow up, and you 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 know, when preachers talk about temptations, they talk about the big ones. Mm -hmm. You know. Don't be a drunkard. Don't have sex with, you know, all the people that, you know, all over the place. Don't, barnacle. don't do this. I was about to make a barnacle <laughs> reference. I stop. Don't do this. But I noticed at Redeemer that you hammer home, um, uh, you know, that that one of the great sins has to do with, you know, work. Yeah. And and being yeah. obsessed with your work well, and being obsessed with success, a lot of it has to do with where you are. But that cuts to the heart of this book, mm -hmm. and that is, what is the good work? What's the good endeavor? Well, the re well, first of all, the book's uh, title is taken from John Coltrane, the liner notes to A Love Supreme. He had a spiritual awakening, and he said that uh, that spiritual awakening changed his attitude toward his own work and his ability to make music. Uh, the problem is that when you make your work your identity, which of course is what we're invited to do in our culture now, especially with the professionals, when you make it your identity, you identify with your work, and that means if, you do, if you're successful, it destroys you because it goes to your head. If you're not successful, it destroys you because it goes to your heart, and, and it, 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 like, it destroys your self-worth. And what you need with faith is faith gives you an identity that's not in work or accomplishment, and that gives you insulation against the weather changes. So if you're successful, you stay humble. If you're not successful, you, just, you, you have some ballast. And so basically making your work, your identity, kind of an idol, if to use biblical terminology, is maybe the big sin of New York City. Well, and, that, and that's what you keep going back to again, is your church, is, is the success, the, the idolatry, chasing success yeah. and resentment of others who are almost as successful or more successful than you. That is, again, not just for this city, but for a, a lot of people now. But right, but New York sets the tone for an awful, especially people in the professions. And, and that's a reason why, that's a little unusual. That, to, to hammer that as the great sin, but I think that's what people are dealing with here. Yeah, um, and th that becomes the obsession, John, and that's, yeah. you, you start pushing your family aside, you start pushing your friends aside, you start pushing everybody aside for success. Yeah. There's the work. How do you, in a pastoral sense, how do you strike the balance though? Because there is both a biblical and a theological mandate, certainly a body of teaching, that you take joy in what you can do. Right that you are fulfilling a certain destiny here right. as, you, as you proceed to the city of God. Yeah. So how do you, where, is, where does balance. idolatry end and, and, and the, the good work begin? As long as you understand that every idol is a good thing turned into an ultimate thing. Idols aren't bad things. So to make sex, money, or power an idol doesn't mean that sex, money, and power are bad. Right. And, uh, and actually when you, when you turn the good thing into an ultimate thing, then it becomes a kind of a demon it judges you if you don't satisfy it, it like it like curses you it becomes a god right and what i think what coltrane was trying to say was that when he had an experience of god's love music just became music it was no longer uh... the currency of his self-esteem and he now he realized before uh... making music was about him right he did it in order to make himself feel good about himself and once uh, god filled his soul music became about other people i now do it in, to serve people. And so work is a great thing it's a, when it's a servant, 
instead of a lord. Right. Do you think that uh, in our culture today, with all of its accelerants and all of its you know, instantaneous satisfaction, that we have lost the concept of there is a dignity to work. Yeah. No matter at what level you're working at, no matter what you do, there's a dignity yes. to it, a meaning to it. Yes, you know, of all the, the Christian teachers on that, Martin Luther was great about that. Martin Luther said, uh, here's the Bible. It says that God feeds everyone that he's made. Okay, but how does he actually feed us? Well, the, the farm girl milking the cow, the truck driver bringing the milk uh, to market, the grocer, that's how God is actually feeding us. He feeds us through other people's work and therefore even the most what we would call menial tasks, tasks that aren't, uh, uh, don't take a lot of skill and they're not paid very well, like the girl milking a cow on a farm, is actually doing God's work. And so Luther and the, especially the Protestant Reformation was really, really good at saying all work is God's work, all work has dignity. Reformation. I, 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 Reformation. Sorry. Reformation. Protestant Reformation made a couple of... Yeah, barnacle. Um, it was a, a little... A it, couple of good contributions. So there's a great quote from C.S. Lewis here on the dangers of pride that mm -hmm. uh, you all reference. Pride gets no pleasure out of having something, only out of having more of it than the next man. We say that people are proud of being rich or clever or good looking, but they are not. They are proud of being richer or cleverer or better looking than others. Yeah, that's another way to get at the idolatry thing. There's nothing wrong with wealth. When the wealth becomes your self-esteem and an identity, then it becomes something that actually drives you. And you also something you can't give away. It, it, one sense, one, one interpretation of the Christian story is it's all about reversal. The first shall be last and the last shall yeah. be first. And mm -hmm. how much does that inform your argument here? Well, I, I think actually it does mean that uh, work, if you see work as service, that's the thing I was mentioning with, with a guy like Martin Luther. If you see work uh, as service, uh, Robert Bella in Habits of the Heart makes this great play, uh, statement where he says, we need to capture the idea that work is calling uh, to serve the greater good rather than just a means of individual advancement. Right. So if work, you can be doing the very same work at the very same level, maybe even making the very same money, and have uh, a servant attitude. That is to say, I'm doing this to serve. This is what Coltrane, he moved from work being a master to being a, a means by which I serve other people. And then, of course, the, your attitude within that work will be different. It'll be, there'll be a humility. Uh, you'll see it. There'll be a poise and ease. And, and so I do actually think that that reversal can happen inside work, and yet two people can be sitting side by side doing the very same work at the same level with completely different attitudes, a servant attitude and a masterful attitude. Mm -hmm. so. All right, Tim Keller, it's always great to have you here. Always great to see you. Short but sweet. Well, we can make it longer if you'd like. <laughs> Um, but uh, it's a fantastic book, and I'll tell you, wherever I go and tell people that uh, when I'm in the city, I go to Redeemer, they just uh, they say so many things about your remarkable work. Well, come by again. I will do it. Thank you. It's great to see you. The book is Every Good Endeavor, and uh, coming up next, one of the most widely recorded songs in music history, and it almost never saw the light of day. Music journalist Alan Light is here with the story behind that song.